kind of what stands out after kind of getting some time to digest some of that film and seeing what kind of plagued you guys a little bit in that game? Uh, I mean, just going through it, and um, I mean, we had chances to win, but I think we, we shot ourselves in the foot too often, um, offensive rebounds and, and turnovers. Uh, we scored on just about all of them. Uh, so just, I mean, those are things that we can control, and if we were able to control those things, we come out with a win. Um, but you come in here, you work, you work your ass off, and you prepare for the next game. When KZ goes out, how much does the game plan for what you guys do? How much does that shift or change? When KZ goes yeah. out, yeah, like uh, like with foul trouble. Oh, had, I mean, yeah. it's it's always the next man up mentality. Um, obviously, he's a great defender. He's long. He's he's, um, he's active, but. When someone else comes in the game, we're still trying to, you know, as a team, get deflections and, and disrupt their offense as much as possible. There are a couple of moments where um, Sabonis really just got, like, everyone kind of ganged around him uh, and their, the ball movement, I mean, the player movement just stopped. Are you guys still learning how to play with a big like that? Yeah, I mean, you want to, you know, give him space to do what he does and, and um, you know, being as far as being a scorer, but... Um, when teams are, you know, collapsing on him and clamping down, uh, you want to be able to give him outlets and, and cut and just give him, just be in his vision so that he can make the pass. Because if you're there, he's going to throw it. Um, so we just have to be there more often so that even if he doesn't see it, he trusts that someone's there. Um, so I mean, that's, that's more on us than it is on him. What's Mike. Mike's message been to you personally and to the, the team as a group uh, since the other night? Um, I mean, to me personally, it's been, I mean, be that guy offensively and defensively. Um, call one time out really just to tell me that uh and then just as a team I mean control what we control you know um he thinks we didn't we, we didn't play well and I mean, we still ended with I think the most passes in the league uh, in that game and like 27 assists so um, statistically it wasn't a terrible game but like you said from what we've done in practice and what we've done in the preseason uh we could be a lot better What's the mindset going into this double double with the Clippers and then a, a tough one again on the road? I'll just go in. I mean, continue to try to be physical without fouling. And uh, offensively, it's really take care of the ball, but play the way that we played. I think we got good shots. Um, but like I said, just the, the turnovers, they start to pile up. I know you're a Kentucky guy. Uh, you're a K Kentucky guy. How excited are you to see John back out there on the court? Uh, it's great. It's great. Whenever, sorry, whenever I committed, um, Washington was playing in Houston, so he can ended up coming to one of my games while uh, while he was there and while I was still in high school. So uh, we still have that relationship, and you know, try to talk every now and again. And uh, it's great to see him healthy and, and back on the floor. I think uh, you know, people say it, like the NBA is better when when guys obviously aren't hurt and someone who's been an All NBA player, a guy who's been an All Star, when he's back on the floor, I think it makes the game much better. Contact practice today. How'd Keegan look too? Oh, he looks fine. Um, can't tell he had COVID. Obviously, he's still a rookie, and um, you know he's learning. But I think he's excited, and we're excited to have him out there for you know a game that counts. Physically, did he seem like he had his wind, or did he seem like he had any any struggles? I think if Keegan was tired, he still wouldn't. He still wouldn't know. <laughs> he, he would still have no idea. Uh, but I think he looked he, he looked great today. He looked what, do you, what do you make of just the, the way? I know you guys take it game by game, but just the, the stretch of games to open the season for you guys. How do you look at that challenge and? and, and approach that you have to have? Um, I mean, we're, I don't know if Mike's still up, but we take it, you know, five games at a time. You know, you try to take a five-game stretch, and obviously we lost the first one, and we're just looking forward to, well, I mean, the next four, but we try to think of it as you know, just one game at a time. Um, so we're focused on the Clippers, uh, and that's pretty much how we're looking at it. After, after that, it's, it's not what we're worried about right now. So, Darren, talk about closing out games. I know we had, we had a little lead heading into the finals game and off the last game. What do you think is most challenging about closing out an NBA basketball game? And also, as the leader of this team, uh, what can we expect from you, you know, heading forward from now in terms of when it comes to crunch time? Well, I think it's obviously it's hard to win. It's hard to win games in the league, but, I mean, we had a 10-point lead with five minutes left, so we, we have to be better at closing it out. And um, it's really just getting quality shots. Um, Limiting them to off uh, to offensive rebounds in one possession and um, just not turning the ball over. Uh, I mean, I think if offensively, if we're getting shots that we want, and you're just not making them, you know, it's a hit or miss lead. Uh, but once you're turning the ball over and they're getting second chance points, you know, those things start to pile up. And, uh, those are things that we can't allow to happen. You talked about working on your shooting off ball movement coming into the year. And I think it was five and nine that game one. How good did it feel to see those go down in game one? Oh, it was great. Um, for me, it's continued not, not to settle uh, as far as shooting jumpers, but um, I mean, when they're going in, I think, I think it helps the team. And, um, you know, uh, Portland started to switch their coverage throughout the, throughout the game, and like I said, that's why I turned the ball over, because half my turnovers were just, I dribbled and the ball just went somewhere else. Uh, 
but just seeing a, a change in coverages, I think, helps helps my team. It, it allows uh, our space to be better, and uh, it allows Del Mosco to work more. Leo, last one. Individually speaking, when you watch the film, is there anything particular that you saw that you could do better? Yeah, I mean, like I said, take care, taking care of the ball. And also, when I'm not guarding, you know, one of those guys, um, as far as this last game with, like, not guarding either Anthony or, or Dame, uh, it's being alert because when you have teams like that that have dynamic scores, and, like, going into this game with PG and Kawhi, when you're not guarding those guys, everybody else is moving, everybody else is cutting. So just being able to be alert uh, for when their drives, you know, you have to continue to see ball in man because those easy buckets get, get the rest of their team going. All right.